As we were saying, this is an issue that extends beyond the state of Georgia and the city of New York. From businessmen in New York to students in Florida, it's a debate that's being had across a wide range of demographics. So here to help us break down the perspective on college campuses is Ophelia Jacobson, a reporter from Campus Reform. Ophelia, when we look at this defund the police movement, it's something that kicked off over the summer, something that has lingering effects to the detriment of Democrats actually in this last election, at least according to polls. But what are people saying about that movement on college campuses? Right, so many college students are too focused on the movement and not necessarily the aftermath. One third of Harvard undergraduates actually favored abolishing or defunding their campus police. And in Chicago, students were protesting for the same actions despite a 139% increase in crime in their city. But what happens when law enforcement is gone? At the Leadership Institute's campus reform, we've covered this aftermath. And what we found is that in many cities and college towns where the defund the police movement is alive and well, violence has increased. Take, for example, the University of Minnesota. They cut ties with their police department and we saw an increase in violent crimes on their campus. And it just goes to show that there is a direct correlation between police presence and public safety. And unfortunately, these college students aren't really willing to recognize that relationship. And even in the past, too, we've seen how this ends up working out. For example, when you defund uh, the police departments in Baltimore, Chicago, Los Angeles, places where they've done it before, you do see that crime does go up in those areas. And it comes to the detriment, by the way, of uh, people of color and immigrant populations. That's really the people who bear the brunt of those type of policies. So I guess the question is, why are people on college campuses so willing to give into this idea that doesn't really have evidence to support it at this point? Right, and that's a great question. We should be looking at the origins of this movement. And in many cases, the rhetoric is coming directly from university faculty and professors. At the University of Florida, where I attend school, they recently held an online event with guest speakers who were actively calling the police a violent institution full of violence workers. I mean, these are the people that are charged with educating the next generation of Americans, and it's certainly sad to see them using this type of rhetoric. And when college students start to see their faculty members, their professors, guest speakers and their peers use this type of language. They think it's normal and mainstream, and because of that, they're more willing to join the movement. And when they call to defund the police, oftentimes I hear that argument, but I think in order for that to even be a plausible argument, they're leaving out the other part of the equation. They are not offering a type of alternative. Like, for example, if there's a crime going on, they don't necessarily tell you how that crime should be handled necessarily. They say that the police should be defunded. We should rework the entire system, but there's very rarely a solution. Have you heard one? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, they really don't offer many, very, a lot of uh, feasible solutions. I mean, a lot of people will tell me that we should, you know, replace police officers with social workers and maybe even firefighters. But at the end of the day, all three are trained for very different situations. And in Seattle this past week, we just saw a social worker who was killed on the streets. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to defend herself. But, you know, it's unfortunate that in 2020, police officers have been distorted into this image of racism and violence. I mean, these men and women, they wake up every single day, put on their uniforms, and put their own lives at risk to protect our communities. What they should be receiving is support and encouragement, but instead they're being replaced and they're being threatened with budget cuts. And it's counterintuitive to me too, because for example, if you did want to include more social workers, for example, that would require more funding to the police department. I understand maybe they want to take it away from the officers who are working every single day, making traffic stops, making sure that our communities are safe. But as you were just laying out, that doesn't do anything unless you reallocate that money somewhere else. But oftentimes, if you do just send out a social worker, you're putting that individual in danger too. They're often dealing with dangerous circumstances. It couldn't hurt to have a police officer there with them, which comes with additional funding. But I want to ask you this too. What is the Republican rebuttal to this? We were just talking to a gentleman from New York, for example, who said that it's as simple as telling people if you want to call 911 and have someone pick up the phone and help you, that's as simple as it is. But do you think that's enough for many conservatives? Right. So a lot of Republicans will look at the evidence and will look at the facts. And if cases in our own country aren't enough, like that of the University of Minnesota, they can always turn to other countries who have already had budget cuts to their law enforcement. In 2010 in England, they had budget cuts to their police officers. And now in 2020, 10 years later, they're actually hiring more police officers because they recognize that their increase in crime was directly correlated to the budget cuts that they had 10 years ago. So again, students are willing to jump behind a hashtag. They're willing to jump behind this movement, but they don't consider what will happen if they're successful in defunding the police. And hey, maybe if we do cut ties and resources, 
Maybe then the students will start to realize just how much these police officers do to keep their campuses and to keep their communities safe. I think that's very well put. In fact, take security out of college campuses as well. See how comfortable a lot of these people are. But I know that this is your beat. This is something that you focus on college campuses. What's going on there? So I just want to take a step back and ask you, does this speak to a bigger problem that's taking place? Right, and this is a trend that we've been covering at Campus Reform is the fact that a lot of students will just go along with what their professors are doing. At the College of Charleston, we had you know a group of faculty members actually write a letter to their mayor calling for reallocation of funds from their police department. So students will look at what their professors are doing and they'll take this as an example without ever thinking on their own and thinking about the actual evidence and information that comes with the movement. I mean, I say this all the time. It used to be the cool thing to question authority and push back on the way things are, but it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It seems like a lot of people are more willing to give in to what they're told, and I think that's problematic, especially on college campuses. But Ophelia Jacobson, I appreciate you coming on the program tonight, breaking down the perspective from college campuses. Thank you. Still ahead.